What's up everyone? So CES is already bringing us some big news. Mainly, I'm going to cover two Nikon cameras in two separate videos. This one is pretty shocking, the Nikon D500. So the D500 actually did catch me by surprise because I wasn't expecting it. We've been looking for a Nikon D400 with, you know, had great success against with the 300, 300S. We've been looking for something else. Well, I think this is something that is even more than that. So I don't even think it's a direct upgrade to that. I just think it's something entirely in its different level because it's 2016. Nikon has been behind on the times, especially in regards to video. So let's talk about the Nikon D50 real quick. I'll give you the most important specs that you need to know about this thing. Let's analyze it. And then I'll tell you my opinion about who it's for and just to me myself. Nikon is brandishing this thing as the uh, DSLR for the smartphone age because it has a thing in there called SnapBridge, which essentially uses a lower form of Bluetooth and it connects with your smartphone. They're trying to compete with a lot of the Sony products out there, so you don't need these external dongles. You have what you need directly in the camera. So they've needed more, a better form of a flagship camera for their crop line. It's been kind of dead. Really, the only the D7200 has been their main thing that they've had. So this is different than the 7200. I mean, the price is pretty decent on that, but we'll cover that in a second. So this has the same autofocusing and processor as the Nikon D5, which I'll cover in another video. Look at that link down below. So you are getting the X-Speed 5 processor, newer, faster. The D4S had the X-Speed 4, so you see it's already a newer form, and it's supposed to be very fast. It's supposed to help with a lot of the things that you're going to hear about right now. 20 megapixels, totally happy about that. I like the 16 to 20 megapixel range. 24 is fine as well. Then you get a little bit more than you know what is needed. 153 autofocusing points, so you're going to get something a little bit more dynamic. You're going to get 10 frames per second. You can fill up the buffer pretty well. And ISO natively, 50 to 51,000. 200 and it does expand past that but mind you once again this is not a full frame camera this is APS-C a DX camera you're getting 4k 4k ultra high definition video at 30 frames per second and you're also going to get your 1080p as well so that's big Nikon's finally putting 4k and it's getting into this camera right here the Nikon D500 so they've dived in they said okay let's do it they've also implemented the touch screen and a 3.2 articulated screen on the back so once again they use this with the early with the latest 5000 series of camera and they've had the technology so now they're putting into this one right now going back to video an interesting point is at 1080 you have three axis vibration uh, stabilization so you don't, it doesn't matter what lens you're using that is in the camera but once again that's only at 1080p not 4k because of the crop and everything that has to factor into doing that running off the main specs of that this will be two thousand dollars body only and it will be about thirty one hundred thirty two hundred dollars with the kit lens that it will come with in this package and it has a mbd 17 battery grip of only four hundred and fifty dollars i come Come on. So the price of this camera is obviously in question. It's $2,000 and it's a crop sensor camera. It's top of the lines in regards to that. But my thing is you, it really only has 4K uh, essentially compared to like the D750, which is under $2,000 for the most part, which is full frame. And you want to invest more in full frame glass you know, and it will work better full frame. So it's just interesting to see them price that at $2,000. Now, is it a atrocious price? I will say it's not, but it should be three or $400 less. If this was a $1,600, $1,750 dollar camera, I'd say it's a home run. The $2,000 price tag, it's a bit meh. I, I absolutely don't agree with it, but you know, it is what it is. It's $2,000. It's going to sell very well, I think, because of what it has in it, because it's essentially the Nikon D5 guts to that part in which you're getting on the high end of uh, Nikon's full frame line. I think this is for mainly kind of a video person on the Nikon side, someone who isn't into Canon or invested into Canon, because it feels like they've done a lot to do with that. Now, I still think that because of the buffer and everything, it's going to, f it's going to shoot sports well uh, as well, and it is going to be a faster camera, but I'm seeing this more of a video type camera because of some of the things that they put into this and uh, the one interesting thing is that it also uses one XQD card slot and a regular uh, SD card so it's interesting that they've imp implemented that technology back into it from the D4S, I think it's a D4S, maybe D4, whatever, uh, and they're incorporating that in the card. It's interesting that they didn't go C fast, which is faster and it's a better card, but they're still trying to keep that XQD card in existence. So for me, I absolutely have no reason to buy this one. It's not the fact that I don't like crop sensors. It's because I just don't need crop sensors. I, I don't like losing that. 
and I just think two thousand dollars is a, is a little bit too much. But if you're really into video, if you if you find yourself coming from like a three thousand series and you have a lot of money, you want to drop into something. The D five hundred is probably a very strong camera for you, especially learning wise and going down the line. But my problem is you're you're getting gypped a lot on your good glass because of that, especially in the zoom line. You can grab some primes to start out, but it's a very heavy investment that I think is a little overpriced. Tell me your thoughts down below. If you're a Nikon user, is this something of interest to you? Do you like the fact that they had the 4K touchscreen processors and everything into this? Were you expecting this D500? I absolutely wasn't. So tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you're a Canon shooter, do you think that this beats out the 7D Mark II, which there's interesting points on that as well?